know what time of day you're watching my channel. Thank you so much for watching. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Today is Era of Young Kipper. It is the day before Young Kipper. It is Tuesday, October 4th, 2022. Excuse that. I had to check the date. I thought it was the 3rd. <laughs> Anyway, we are in Elmont this morning. And I say we, I mean me and Pipe Doctor. We're missing Peter. Unfortunately, Peter got a case of Corona. And not this 12 pack that you buy in bottles. He's got China up in him. They finally got my boy Peter. They finally got him. He's actually feeling a lot under the weather. Um, not feeling too good. He's got flu-like symptoms, so we do wish him a refuah shalima. I mean, a speedy recovery. Blessings and thoughts to Peter. He'll be back, hopefully, Thursday or Friday. Anyway. And this morning, we're working on this. This is the U.S. Boiler Burnham Alpine ALP 105. Should be wall-mounted, but floor-mounted installations are acceptable. And they actually make a version that actually sits on the floor as well. But this one they sat on a cinder block. And this one, unfortunately, has seen better days. Customer's complaint. LED module does not work. No heat. Independent gas-fired water heater for domestic hot water. Venting looks acceptable. I want to take a look outside and see how these terminate. Uh, let's do an assessment. We have two zones with the zone valve, another zone valve. Um, I'm going to guess that they installed zone valves because they didn't put in flow checks in the circulators. And they don't know how to wire. <laughs> wow, look at that. Yeah, so you have a zone valve, zone valve, two circulators. I don't see another zone valve on this line. Right, so it looks like... However, the installing contractor was, um, didn't know how to wire boilers, but they knew how to wire zone valves, which is quite a task in itself, because it took me a very, very long time to figure out zone valves until I actually saw a chart, which looks like this. Only when I saw that chart for the first time, I actually realized and comprehended, the word is actually comprehend, I comprehended how the zone valve wiring operates, how 24 volts passes through transform, um, 24 volts comes to a transformer, goes to thermostat, leaves thermostat, goes to motor, leaves motor, and then goes back to transformer. When that motor is energized, right, do we have the end switch closed? And the end switch is just a glorified this light switch. Or if, if you have, you know, two zone valves or you have a thousand zone valves, all those end switch wires, they all get wired together, you know, independently. So one set here, one set there, and the other ones go to TT. So it's actually pretty easy. But why this guy did this, I don't have no idea. I have no clue. I think he's maybe he's a little insane in the membrane, but a shout out to Cypress Hills. But nonetheless, we're here, Burnham Alpine. This is the 150. I, oh, wow, I misspoke. <laughs> Grossly oversized for the uh, small 1800 square foot house. Um, we have a leak on the, wow, look at that, see that? We have uh, a leak on the, <sighs> that's superficial, this is the heat exchanger, I bet you this thing's never been taken apart, but um, yeah, see that high temperature limit sensor right there, that's been replaced, that was a common failure, um, wow. Wow. I bet you this thing hasn't been taken apart ever. That's my best bet. We may have to schedule a service call and have Daniel come here. So we have pressure. Our triticator gauge is upside down. And it looks like we have right around 20 PSI of pressure. Let me take my big black thing, which I like putting in my mouth sometimes, you know, the flashlight. All right, so that's kind of empty. Customer's complaint. No illumination of control board, and the unit is not, does not provide uh, space heating. If they had an indirect, I bet you that would also be out. So let's take a 
Let's jump right into things right now. Uh, you can see I have no power illumination on my Sage 2 controller. It's not good, not cool. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check my input and output on my transformer and make sure we have uh, 24 volts coming out. So let me tell you what I did. I disconnected the two leads, right? The pink and the brown, which goes to this Molex connector, which translate into yellow and brown. And I have my Fluke 902 multimeter. I got no voltage there, All right? So the next thing we're gonna check is incoming power into it, which is that connection back there. To facilitate ease of access getting to this rear 110 volt Molex connector, the tray holding the Sage 2 controller, the display, and the transformer does slide all the way out so that way I can get to those wires and I got my multimeter leads hooked up to it. We're gonna turn on power, okay? And we can see we do have 120 volts going to the transformer. So let's kill power again. I'm trying to do this one-handed. We're gonna plug this back in. We're gonna check for any corrosion on the terminal leads there, there and there. I don't see any present. Let's plug this back in and maybe it'll work. All right, I have the tray reinstalled back on the track. I have my 110 volt Molex connector. I'll try to show you right back there, right, right there. Reconnected, okay. I have my multimeter leads hooked up to the outlet output of the transformer let's turn the power on and again we don't have any voltage so at a minimum we need a transformer here but why did a transformer die uh is something else the cause we're gonna have to find out so what i'm gonna do is well, i'm gonna go get a new transformer we're gonna install an in lamp an inline fuse between the transformer and the burnham hydronic control the ch2 and i'm going to install those inline fuses because i want to protect the new transformer that I install, God forbid there's a short with the Sage controller or something else in the system so it'll help me in ease of troubleshooting. Okay, let me show you what we got here. I got a pair of gloves <laughs> to protect my hands. All right, here's the new uh, Burnham Alpine replacement uh, transformer, genuine Burnham Alpine. I got some Busman ATC style, three amp fuses, and I got a few spade connectors because we're gonna clip the wires here to install the fuse. All right, so let's swap out this transformer and see what happens. So I lost one of the silver screws, it fell on the floor, cause I don't know, my Death Box Incorporated long flat Phillips screwdriver doesn't work. So they give you a couple screws, right? In this little white little case, these little black screws, right? And I'm looking, I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm fighting with this thing and it's not working. And take a look at this. What the f, f? come on. Why do this? This is stupid. All right, we have a three amp inline fuse wired. Let's see if it blows. Yep, instantly. Instantly blew the fuse. All right. It's gonna be an expensive day. Okay, take two, another three amp fuse. This time we're going to bypass high temperature limit sensor, which is the second one right there. Well, the Teflon tape has been replaced once before. We're going to bypass it, turn on power, and we don't have any shorts anymore. So that high temperature limit sensor right there is off the secondary voltage circuitry of the system. All right, the system is on. There's our new high temperature limit sensor right there. Replace the flu stack temperature sensor cap. And I thought it was the low water cutoff, which gets wired into the secondary circuit, but it wasn't. Well, let's just take a look at this again. Circulator, circulator, zone valve, zone valve, right? Bow. <laughs> Argo box, two zone switching relay. I guess one transformer for each zone valve. When all they need to do is add an IFC to both circulators. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just give a quick little recap. When you have a short in your low voltage wiring or low voltage circuit on this Burnham Alpine, the first thing that you're gonna do, I didn't mention this in the video, the first thing you're gonna do, remove TT, you know, pull out that slide out tray with the Sage 2 controller. You see that low voltage terminal strip? Locate the, T, the heating TTs, 
and locate the, your indirect water heater, your uh, domestic hot water TTs. Remove both of those and see if the problem goes away. If it goes away, now you can diagnose your space seating or your indirect um, TT connections and those circuits, right? If it continues, you need to identify to see if you have any frayed wires, anything they're touching, like things like that on the low voltage wiring. Yes, I know it's like finding a needle in a haystack, but just give it a once over. Don't start ripping off all the wires and all the connectors, you know, the wire ties, things like that. Just give it a quick little once over. Um, you know, a good technician is observant of his surroundings. If you have a low water cutoff connected, disconnect that. See if it blows the fuse. Then start with your air pressure switch. Disconnect that purple wire. That's your 24 volts going to it. I'm pretty sure it's purple, right? You see it in the video. Maybe, maybe not, but disconnect that purple wire. That's your 24 volts going to the air pressure switch. <coughs> See if it blows the fuse again. In this particular case, interestingly enough, it was the high temperature limit sensor. I have it in the truck, I replaced it. Not really a big deal, but I also replaced the stack sensor and cap. Made note with the homeowner, I had closely spaced tees that were about 20 inches apart. Not good, but I planted the seed for either a system major overhaul or system replacement. Plant the seed, make them aware of options of what's going on, develop that trust, develop that relationship that you're forming with the client. It'll only bring you magical places. All right, guys, I'd appreciate comments and criticism down in the comments section down below. And as always, smash that thumbs up button. And I'd really appreciate it if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. All right. Until next time, be well, God bless, stay safe. And to all those of the Jewish faith, have a easy and meaningful fast. And I apologize if I offended anyone over the past year. I'll try to do better the next coming year. I forgive everyone. And like I said, have an easy and meaningful fast on Young Kipper 2022. Mikey Pipes, signing off.